Hello and welcome to the next lesson in the advanced C Sharp course here on Tuts Plus. Now in this lesson I want to take you through a rather interesting topic and that is extension methods. Now extension methods are kind of one of those walking the fence type features of the C Sharp language that you're either on board with or you're not. You're either for or you're against and there's a lot of people that will argue one way, one way or the other. As I've said several times before, I will ultimately leave it up to you and to your discretion. I do use extension methods in certain instances but I think they're to be used appropriately and not just thrown about all over the place. So really what an extension method is, is the ability for you as a developer to add functionality to maybe some sort of class or type that you may not have access to in order to modify its code to give it some sort of functionality that you desire. So let's go ahead and hop into Visual Studio and I'm going to show you a couple examples of extension methods. So here we are once again back in Visual Studio. I will do the file new project dance and I will click console application and OK. So I'm going to set this up just a little bit contrived but I hope you'll bear with me for a moment. I'm going to create a new file and it's going to be a class and I'm going to add this to my project and I'll call it person as we've dealt with this several times before in the past lessons. I will make this a public class and I will give it two properties, the string name property and the integer age property. Now that's going to be it. Now just imagine for a moment that this type, this person class, does not exist within our project. This was something that was provided to us via a DLL or some other assembly that has been given to us by somebody else that has been working on it and we don't have access to its code. This is all we were given, this is all we can deal with and we just have to be happy with it. So now I'm going to save this and let's just say in my code here in my program.cs this is my code that I have access to. I spend a lot of time working with this person class. I spend a lot of time creating new instances of person and I'm constantly having to write helper methods that will allow me to do certain operations on it just because those operations don't exist natively on that type. So I could wish that there was some sort of method on that type, some sort of functionality so that I wouldn't have to continually write the code to do it over and over again. So I've gone to that developer and he's either too busy or he doesn't feel that it belongs there or for whatever reason he just can't add that functionality to his type. So the next best thing that I can do as a developer is use an extension method to take that functionality that I want to be part of that type and simply add it to it even though I don't have the source code to person. So let's see how we would do that. So let's just say for instance I have a lot of code that's in my project where I have to or that I wished that I could have my person give a greeting to someone else that I wish instead of me having to hard code a few console write lines here and there I wish there was a method that hung off of person that was say something like say hello that is an instance method that I could execute whenever I needed to do that line of code instead of having to write it off in some other helper class or helper methods to do it for me. Well the way that we would do that is via extension methods and extension methods are rather interesting in how you implement them but quite simple once you get the hang of it. So in order to create an extension method you have to start by creating a static class. So I'm going to create a public static class and we'll just give it the name of extensions and within your public static class you need to create one static method for each extension method that you would like to create. So in this case, like I said, I wish that there was a method, an instance method that hung off of person that was called say hello, that did not take any parameters, that did not have any return value, and merely output something to the console. Well, the way that we would do with that in this case was create a public static void method and we would call it say hello, whatever we want to call it. And then the input parameters are a little interesting. So what you have to specify as the input parameters, now you can specify any parameters that you would like, but in the case of extension methods, the first parameter that you have to pass into it needs to be the type of the class that you wish to add this extension method to. So in my case it's person and I want to give it a name of person so that I can reference this 
throughout the rest of my code, but there's one other little stipulation. In order for the compiler to look at this and say, okay, this is an extension method that needs to be added on, an instance method that needs to be added on to the person class, you need to preface the type of the first parameter of the extension method with the this keyword. Now I know it seems very strange, but just bear with me and you're gonna see what I'm talking about. So now I can do whatever code I'd like to do in here. And like I said before, I wanted to do a simple console right line with a little bit of formatting to have the name of the person says hello. And that's all I really wanted because I had to write helper methods all over the place to do this for me. And I wish it just hung off that type. So we'll say person.name so we can print out say in this instance, John says hello. Now the way that we access that is just as if we thought or just as if we had created that in the local code of the person class, we simply say p dot say hello. And now you can see there that the compiler knows that this is an extension method because of the way that we have formatted our static class and our static method. And then given the first parameter is a person type, so that's the type that this extension method is going to be hung off of prefaced by the this keyword. So I can do say hello, I can save that and hit control F5. And there you have it, you have just added functionality, you have just added an instance method to a type that you did not have access to its code. Now that is very cool. It doesn't have to stop there. You can continue to add other parameters if you want, uh, just as you would do any other, uh, any other sort of operation. So we could say, we want this person to say hello, and we want that person to be able to say hello maybe to another person. So we'll pass in a parameter, another person parameter, and this is going to be person two. Now, as I mentioned before, the only parameter that needs to be prefaced with the this keyword is the very first parameter, and that is the parameter that this extension method will be added to. So now we can, now that we have two parameters, now we can say that whoever is calling this method says hello to, and we'll put in another person dot, or person two dot name. So now we're gonna have one person say hello to another. So now we're gonna need a second person, var p2 equals to a new person, and this time the name is going to be equal to Sally, and her age, although you shouldn't ask, is going to be 35. Now we'll save that. So now when we have to call our say hello method, it is going to only show the parameter that you need to pass in that is not the this prefaced parameter. So in this case, I'm only going to pass in P2. I will save this and hit control F5. And there we go. John now says hello to Sally. So there you have it. This is the concept of extension methods. Now I will say to you, and this is my own opinion, take it as you wish. I only feel that it is necessary or that it is even right for me to create extension methods for types if they are types that I do not have source code access to. I feel that it's very silly for me to write extension methods on types that I have written that I have access to within my project. Once again, that's just a feeling that I have. I feel that it's better for me to go to a developer who has provided me with an assembly with a DLL that has code within it to ask him to add functionality to it, and if he can't, then I don't feel bad adding an extension method to his code on my side. Now, once again, that's just a perf personal preference. Take it as you wish. Once again, I leave it up to your own discretion. But that is extension methods. Use them if you wish, and I will see you in the next lesson.